Janine, Janine, Jim, thank you so much Hi. for your time. Hi. Uh, congratulations on the series. I'm very excited to everyone to get to see this. I am from Oakland. I, I grew up in Berkeley, went to church in West Oakland. So, oh, wow. uh, you know, the history of the Black Panthers and everything is very, very close to me as, as it was uh, taught uh, extensively uh, growing up, thankfully. And so I'm excited for this series to kind of do the same and maybe help expand that and, and to, you know, help people know this, you know, get into the story more. So my question is, uh, one of your lines in the in the series is, uh, when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. Where did you guys <laughs> find the balance in, uh, you, you know, some of the histo the history and then just some of the fictional um, interpretations for entertainment? Well, I mean, to your first point, we think it's important that, you know, you learned about those things the way that you did. We live in a time when I'm guessing there's a lot of the country that couldn't teach about Huey P. Newton right now. And so it's important for us to go around that to get this message to people. Um, and regarding the question of the truth, which I think is an important one, I would say two things. First of all, the most crazy stuff in the story is all true. <laughs> the stuff where you look at it and you go, there's no way that happened, that happens. So don't Google while you're watching the show. Google after, but the, the rule of thumb is if it's insane and you're like, that can't have happened, it probably happened. The other aspect of that is we always struggled and, and fought to do, to, 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 to stay on the capital T truth, the truth of who the person is and the truth of what our story is. And so um, certain scenes, we don't know how they went down, you know, in certain places, mm -hmm. you know, we had to combine events uh, or, or, you know, like I think the, 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 the best example probably is the state capitol. State thing. capitol, yeah. He wasn't, Huey wasn't there. Bobby Seale was there with little Bobby, but we wanted people to understand that this is what changed gun control and this is what made the government and the police more after Huey, yeah. Right. And, and then speaking speaking of Huey, uh, can you tell me a little bit about what makes Andre Holland, you know, the, the perfect lead for this? I mean, Andre Holland is is probably one of the greatest actors of our time. Um, he brought such nuance and gravitas to the character. He is an intellect himself, and so was Huey. So those brilliant minds sort of met, and, and you could feel Huey coming through um, Andre's performance. But he also brought that depth and that kind of pressure that you see Huey was facing. COINTELPRO, you know, the government had its eyes set on, you know, taking Huey out. And that thing, that, that fear, but also that resilience that Huey wrestled with, Andre brought, you know, in spades. And he also brought the heart, you know, we, we, there's times where he's playing with kids where, you know, he loves children, Huey Newton, but also where he loves and he opens up his heart. And you see that heart open up in the scenes with Gwen um, because he, although he was a revolutionary facing exile, he was also a man that was in love. And so we tried to show that dichotomy as he was making this journey. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, chemistry between Alessandro and PJ? Uh, just because uh, I thought it was so it was so great on screen because they're obviously best friends, and then they you know they have this rift as soon as Huey comes in. Yeah, I mean those two like <laughs> they, they you know they're characters like they belong together. They um, yeah. PJ in particular is one of these people who lights up a room wherever he goes. All He's the time. Just so full of light <laughs> and love. It's like he walks in and everybody's, PJ, you know, he's like Norm from Cheers. And he just, he's, he's such a loving, warm, gregarious person. It's hard not to have that, you know, when he's part of anything. But I think him and Alessandro, you I mean, you can just see the chemistry on the screen between them. They like, I, that friendship is real. And that's how they are like off camera as well. No, they don't have the same kind of fights that Bert and Steve had, but they definitely have the same sort of like, you know, hanging out kind of thing. Yeah, they. I mean, they they light up a room, and you see the you see that thing where, you know, PJ, um, his character Steve Blonner, he he gets in everybody's face, um, while Burke kind of does some something, and like Steve is kind of cleaning it up, and so you see that dynamic that they kind of took from being young kids to adulthood, where Burt has these crazy ideas, but. 
you know, Steve knows if you don't get on the Bert train, it's going anyway. So you just better get with it. And in this story, you see this reversal occur with these um, two characters, which, you know, is mind blowing. And um, S Steve, PJ, just he, he just brought a heart to that arc that is phenomenal. And I think the beauty of Alessandro playing Bert is Bert understood who the star of this was. That is Huey Newton. He understood that what Huey had at stake was far greater than anything he would ever have at stake as being a child of a studio head, coming from money, coming from privilege. And so Alessandro brought an ease to the character that kind of leaned back and let Huey be the visionary and never took up the space because he knew Bert knew this was not his place to take up the space. And we see that very, very clearly in the series. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Again, I appreciate the series very, very much. And I can't wait for everybody to see it. Thanks uh, thank for you. being with me for a few minutes. Thank